Hello students, hope you all are doing great. So welcome back to our channel Food Tech Online and today we'll be going to discuss on CUET PG Food Science and Technology on the chapter Fats and Oils and this will be our class 3 of few important MCQs. So now let us proceed. Okay, before starting, let me tell you once again that Food Tech Online has launched an ebook for all the CUET PG Food Science and Technology students. So this ebook will cover all the six chapters. Those are there in your syllabus. Those are Introduction to Food Science and Technology, Basic Baking Technology, Introduction to Food Safety and Preservation Technology, and Advanced Baking Technology, Advanced Fruits and Vegetable Preservation Technology, and Food Safety and Hygiene Quality Testing. So actually, this ebook will cover all the six chapters in a precise or a concise manner which is important for your exam point of view so what you have to do the link is given in the description box you can go through that link and can have this book okay so chalo, now let us proceed with question number one so the catalyst which is used in the addition of iodine is nickel or platinum lewis acid methyl magnesium chloride or mercury chloride so my correct option is mercury chloride number d so nickel, Lewis acid and methyl magnesium chloride, these three cannot be used as a catalyst in the addition of IIT. Next question number two, which of the following is responsible for rancidity? Alkalis, ketones, aldehydes and alcohols. So my correct option is C, that is aldehydes. So rancidity, rancidity actually it is typically it occurs due to the oxidation of fats and oils and leads to the formation of the off flavor or odor we can say. So this volatile acids or the aldehydes, these are responsible for the rancidity due to the offensive order, due to its offensive order. So over here, my correct option is C, that is aldehydes. So question number three, the number of milligrams of KOH which is required for the saponification of one gram of oil and fat is called. Options are acid number, iodine number, Richard Missiles number and saponification number. So the number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide which is required for the saponification of one gram of oil and fat, it is known as saponification number. This definition is quite important. Next, what is the uh, acid number? Let us discuss this also. So, acid number actually it measures the amount of free fatty acids which are present in a substance. And iodine number, iodine number it actually measures the degree of unsaturation in a substance which is based on the ability to react with the iodine. And Richard Messel's number, Richard Messel's number actually it is the volume of 0.1 molar solution which required by the neutralization of fatty acid in 5 gram of fat. So over here uh, my correct answer is number D that is saponification number. So number 4, iodine number is defined as the number of grams of iodine needed for the iodination of dash gram or grams of oils and fat. So options are 1, 500 and 1000. So over here my correct option is number C that is 100. So the iodine number is defined as the number of grams of iodine which is needed for the iodination of 100 grams of oil or fat. Number 5. Richard Messel's number is defined as the volume of 0.1 molar potassium hydroxide solution required for the neutralization of how many gram or grams of fats and oils. So just now we discussed the definition of Richard Messel's number. So over here correct option is 5 that is B. Number 6. Which of the following tells the amount of free fatty acid present in fats or oils? So options are acid number, iodine number, saponification number and Richard Missiles number. So this also we discussed. So the amount of free fatty acid which is present in fat or oil is indicated by the acid number. So our correct option is A that is acid number. So number 7. Which of the following helps in the classification of oils into drying, semi-drying and non-drying categories? Acid number iodine number, saponification number and Richard Messel's number. So over here correct option is number B that is iodine number. So the classification of oil into drying, semi-drying or non-drying categories is actually classified by the iodine number. Option number B is correct. So question number 8. Which of the following is of special value in testing the purity of butter and desi ghee? So options are acid number, iodine number, saponification number and Richard Messel's number. So over here my correct option is D that is Richard Messel's number. So Richard's mes Richard Messel's number actually is a special value in testing the purity of butter and desi ghee and it is an indicator of how much volatile fatty acid can be extracted from the fat through the saponification. So over here correct option is D that is Richard Messel's number.
So question number nine: melting point of fat is dash and melting point of oil is dash. So options are higher, higher, lower, lower, higher, lower, and lower, higher. So over here, my correct option is D. Uh, C that is higher and lower. So generally, we see that uh, say that fats generally have higher melting points compared to that of oils. So oils at uh, oils are liquid at room temperature, and they contain a higher portion of unsaturated fatty acids, which make them a low melting point. Whereas fats, what happen? They are they have higher uh, portion uh, portion of saturated fatty acids. So uh, we can say that they have higher melting. points and which causes this fats to be solid at room temperature and this is the only reason that is why that fats are solid at room temperature so over here my correct option is c that is melting point of fat is higher compared to that of oil now next question number 10 so question number 10 which of the following is an example of fats so options are glycerol triolate vegetable ghee coconut oil and groundnut oil so more over here my correct option is b that is vegetable ghee so vegetable ghee it is a type of fat and it is typically made from the hydrogenation of vegetable Uh, oils so it is uh, solid at room temperature so just now we discussed that uh, fats are solid at room temperature and which ghee is also solid at room temperature and which is a characteristic of fat whereas this glycerol triolate coconut oil and groundnut oil these are the examples of oil since they are liquid at room temperature so over here my correct option is b Okay next level select the incorrect statement from the following options options are oils are saturated triglycerides oils have lower melting points oils are liquid at room temperature and example of oils are glycerol triolate coconut oil and olive oil so this statement also we discussed right now so over here the incorrect will be that oil is saturated oils are saturated triglycerides since we know that this statement is incorrect because oils they contain both the saturated and And the unsaturated triglycerides and the other options that is oils have lower melting point this statement is correct oils are liquid at room temperature this statement is also correct an example of oil are glycerol triolate coconut oil olive oil etc so this statement is also correct so we know that the term oil actually it refers to the more physical state that is liquid at room temperature rather than the specific chemical composition so therefore over here option number a is my incorrect statement Next question twelve. Which of the following is not a suitable solvent for oils and fats? So benzene, carbon tetrachloride, chloroform, and water. So over here, my correct option is D. That is water. So water, it is not suitable solvent for fats and oils. Why? Because they are hydrophobic in nature. That means they repel. So they do not dissolve in water. And this benzene, carbon tetrachloride, and chloroform, these are organic solvents. So they are commonly used to dissolve fats and oils. So over here, my correct option. option will be d that it is not suitable for solvents for oils and water so next question is 13 that saponification is hydrolysis by options are alkalies in digestive tracts of human beings by acids and by salts so over here my correct option is option number a that is by alkalies so we know that saponification it is a process of hydrolysis that occurs specifically by the action of alkalies what are the examples of alkalies use sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxides on esters particularly triglycerides to produce the soaps and the glycerols so over here my correct option is option number a that is by alkalies so question number 14 which of the following acts as a catalyst in the digestive tracts of the human beings options are lewis acid lewis base hydrogen peroxide or the lipase enzyme so over here my correct option is d that is lipase so these are the enzymes that acts as a catalyst in the digestive tracts of the human beings so how they do they catalyzes the hydrolysis of the dietary fats so that is the triglycerides into the fatty acids and glycerols which facilitates their absorption in the digestive systems so over here correct option is d that is lipase question number 15 hydrogenation is the conversion of unsaturated acid groups into the saturated one by catalyst titanium lead nickel and tin so over here correct option is number c that is nickel so hydrogenation actually it is a process of conversion of unsaturated fatty acids to saturated one and this is typically catalyzed by the metals such as the nickels or palladium platinum 
actinums. So among the following option, nickel is the correct option over here. And this nickel is used as a catalyst mainly in the food industries also. So over here, correct option is C. Next question number 16. So vegetable ghee is manufactured by saponification, hydrogenation, oxidation, polymerization and reductions. Over here, correct option is B, that is hydrogenation. And this we also discuss the process of hydrogenation. So vegetable ghee actually, it is typically manufactured by the process of hydrogenation. So what happens in this process of hydrogenation? The addition of hydrogen gas is done to the unsaturated vegetable oil to convert it to the saturated ones. Fats. So this process actually helps to solidify the oils and give them a texture similar to that of the animal fats, for example, the ghee. So over here, correct option is B, that is hydrogenation. Next, number 17. Hydrogenolysis is a reaction which leads to the reduction products of aldehydes, ketones, alcohols and esters. So over here, correct option is C, that is alcohol. So hydrogenolysis is a reaction which leads to the formation of glycerol and the reduction product is alcohol. So correct option over here is C, that is alcohol. Question number 18. The saponification of a fat or oil is done using that solution for hot process. So options are potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid and sodium chloride. So over here my correct option is B that is sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide we know it is a strong alkali solution and it is so this it actually reacts with the fats and oils in the presence of heat to produce the soaps and the glycerol. So over here my correct option is sodium hydroxide. So the saponification of a fat or oil is done using sodium hydroxide solution for hot process. Question number 19. The saponification of a fat or an oil is done using a dash solutions for cold process. Options are potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid and sodium chloride. So over here my correct option is option number A that is potassium hydroxide. So the saponification of fat or oil is done using potassium hydroxide solution for cold process. So when potassium hydroxide is used, soft soaps are formed and this cannot be used in the hard water. So over here my correct option is option number A that is potassium hydroxide. Question number 20. The scientific term for water loving is hydrophilic, hydroxide, hydrophobic and none. So this is two easy questions. So correct option is A that is hydrophilic. So we know the scientific term for water loving is hydrophilic. And what is hydrophilic actually describes a substance which have which substance or a molecule which have a strong affinity towards the water and they tend to dissolve or to be attracted towards the water. So over here correct option is number A that is hydrophilic. So next question number 21 palmitolic acid that is 16 is to 1 classified as dash fatty acids saturated monounsaturated polyunsaturated and polysaturated fatty acids since over here it's given that 16 is to 1 so 1 over here represents one double bond that means it is monounsaturated fatty acid unsaturated comes when there is a double bond and mono means one that means one double bond that is monounsaturated so correct option is b that is monounsaturated fatty acid so question number 22 chemically fats and oils are alcohols acids esters and alkalis so correct option is c that is esters so fat, chemically fats and oils are esters so they are formed by the esterification of fatty acids with glycerols and each molecule of this fats or the oils they contains three fatty acid molecules which are esterified to the glycerol molecules so over here correct option is c that is Easters. Question number 23. Which of the following is used in the reaction called saponification? Strong base, strong acid, hydrogen or nickel? So this also we discussed, right? So correct option is A, that is strong base. So saponification is a reaction in which the ester bonds typically, the which are found in the fats and oils, so these are hydrolyzed by the strong base. So strong base such as sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxides. So this reaction actually produces soaps and the glycerols. So correct option is A that is strong base. Question number 24. Which of the following is classified as steroids? Options are phospholipids, glycerols, wax and cholesterol. So correct option over here. So cholesterols, these are classified as the uh, steroids. So correct option is D that is cholesterols. 
so steroids actually steroids these are the type of the lipid characteristics which are these are the carbons actually which contains the four fused rings and typically with the various functional groups so which are attached so this cholesterol actually these are the essential components of the cell membranes and they serves as a precursor for the synthesis of steroid hormones in our cells so over here correct option is d that is cholesterol so question number 25 a triglyceride it contains lauric acid 12 is to 0 linoleic acid 18 is to 2 palmitoleic acid that is 16 is to 1 so how many moles of hydrogen are required to completely hydrogenate this triglyceride 2 6 3 and 4 so i want you all to comment me down the correct option for this question so i'll explain you this question once so to determine the number of moles of hydrogen gas to require to require to completely hydrogenate this given triglycerides we need to consider the number of double bond in each of the fatty acid components say for lauric acid it is 12 is to 0 means zero double bond is there uh, then linoleic acid 18 is to 2 that means two double bond is there and palmitoleic acid 16 is to 1 that means one double bond is there so in this what we have to do we have to uh, to completely hydrogenate the double bond in each of the fatty acid component we need to uh, multiply two moles of hydrogen gas or okay so for multiplying two moles of hydrogen gas what will happen uh, per the double bonds so for the linoleic acid that is 18 is to 2 so it will be two double bonds so we need to 2 into 2 that is 4 moles of hydrogen gas next for this uh, linoleic acid okay palmitoleic acid that is 16 is to 1 so 1 double bond 1 into 2 that means 1 uh, 2 moles of hydrogen gas and for lauric acid that is 18 is to 0 that means no double bond is there 0 into 2 that means 0 will get so addition of these two that means 4 moles of linoleic acid and 2 moles of palmitoleic acid so you will tell me uh, comment me down the correct option for for this so how many moles of hydrogen gas in total so okay with this we have also completed our few important questions of fats and oils and with this yes if you have not yet uh, installed our app that is food tech online then you can install this app there are various sections over here that CUET FCI food analyst FSO or food uh, related any other examination like gate 2025 and other sections are there so if you are practicing for any of the food related examination preparing for actually then you can install this app and practice everyday few questions related to that there are various sections you by clicking on that particular section you can practice question answers okay and you can enhance your preparation also so yes link is given in the description box for you and yes if you like our channel you can share with your friends and you can subscribe for more further videos till then thank you and enjoy learning